So, um, the MRC OG part two exam. Um, I'm going to share with you um, what I did for this exam and how how to really study for the exam in order to be able to pass the exam because that's the main thing really. Um, you don't want to be um, attempting it and re-attempting it and exhausting yourself. So what you really want to do is put in the effort and get through it the first time. So in my opinion, um, the reason people fail this exam is because they don't put in the effort that's required um, to, to be able to go through all the study material um, that will maximise your chances of passing the exam the first time. Now that's difficult when you've got a full-time job um, with on calls, with family commitment, with life, with the pandemic, with with so much going around you, um, it's it's difficult to concentrate and focus, and and be able to learn and memorize um, what's required of you to be able to um, attempt um, the exam. Um, however, having said that. Um, there is no other way around it. So what I'm trying to say is, um, if you don't, yes, life will carry on and there is a lot happening around you. Um, but what you really need to do is sit, focus and do the exam. Because if you do it that way, um, your chances of passing the exam not only go up, but also that means you're done and dusted with the exam in your first attempt and you don't have to keep um, revising the same material um, and, and putting yourself under the pressure um, of, of, you know, of re-attempts, um, especially now that they've got a limit, um, the RCOG have put a limit to the exam as to how many attempts you can, you can, you can have at it. Um, so my advice to you is put in the effort and that requires time. You have to be able to give time to this exam. Um, so what I mean by that is, um, now most people will say an average of six months. Now that time is quite individualized. It all depends on what else is happening around you. What other commitments you've got, what kind of on call rotor you've got and, and so forth. But, but ideally I think between six months to a year is, is, is a good time, um, to, to, to be able to cover all the revision material that the exam requires you to. Um, but having said that, um, I have known friends who have um, sat the exam um, in eight weeks, um, some who have done a revision for three months and have done the exam and have passed, um, and another um, friend who was a super genius and she, um, and she, well, that's what she claims that she did the exam after studying only for three weeks, but she was quite lucky that she had um, a husband of hers who um, also happened to do the same specialty as her and um, and had already sat the exam so she was quite lucky in um, getting help in terms of the revision material from him um, so um, so so yeah so what I'm trying to get at is the timeline is not important what's important is you need to be able to put in the effort the concentration the focus um, and, and and the work that's required um to 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 cover the the vast amount of material um that you need to be studying um for this exam so um the exam um consists of two exam papers paper 1 paper 2 um and each paper has got 50 SBAs and 50 um EMQs um SBA standing for single best answers and EMQs are the extending extended matching questions so where you've got a um a, a little case study for example um which talks about um say for example um you know the um, the consent, for example, and then you'll have questions relating to that case study, um, to, to, to it after. Um, so 
it's um it's it's based on one theme that's the whole point of an e and q um and there could be uh one question after it two three four um and and so forth um now that's quite a new style of 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 what the rcog have brought in um and and and, and but there are lots of question books available to be able to practice these questions um just so you can get the hang of being able to answer um, these questions in an effective manner and, and also in a manner that the question wants you to think. Uh, because a lot of times, um, after you've worked practically on the wards, uh, what tends to happen is you tend to think more practical than what the textbook or the guideline or the um, the question uh, wants you to think like. So it's important to be able to practice those questions with using different question books and different websites so you're kind of getting um, into the into the practice of being able to um, think and answer like the textbook wants you to answer um, so so yes so now I've put um, a point on that slide which says organize your revision material now what I mean by that is what you really need to be able to do in 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 whatever time you've given for the exam, three months, six months, whatever, um, is not just be faffing around, wasting time, looking up different resources where, you know, you start reading up one thing or you start using a question bank and find it not very useful um, and stop using it and go on to something else, um, start using that and realize very quickly oh actually don't like that one too look up other resources and by the by the before you know it four months have passed now that's not effective revision and that's not what should be included in the timeline that you've given yourself for the exam you need to be able to figure this all out prior to to be to to your exam revision time um because then then it then you'll be able to revise in an effective manner now even if you take a green top guideline so things that you cover quite a lot in clinical practice so for example your um uh, you know preeclampsia now now questions on preeclampsia or when you do the hypertension guideline on you know with nice um, or like say third and fourth degree tear guideline um, with a green top now, those kind of guidelines you'll be able to cover them quite quickly because you are quite used to, to doing it and practicing it in in real life now that's obviously true for um, UK based doctors um, I'm, I'm not going to go into what internationally happens but that's true for um, for us lot here now when it comes to the guidelines that we don't so commonly use in the UK, um, then you do need to spend more time on these guidelines. Firstly, to be able to understand, comprehend the guideline, and then to be able to summarise it in a manner that you can, um, that will help you um, get the important points off it. So you can, you can just, you can revise um, and, and, and keep those important points in your mind for the exam. Now, in order to be able to do that, you may need to go through that guideline about maybe three times or six times um, to actually to actually be able to comprehend what it's trying to tell you. Now, a common guideline or, or one that comes to mind is the malaria one, for example, because we don't see it a lot here and we don't have a lot of clinical exposure to that guideline. Um, it kind of means that we do need to then spend more time with that guideline, the kind of um, medications that are used and the doses and, and, and the tests that are carried out and so forth. Um, so for so that guideline would take you longer um, to summarise as opposed to a, um, a shoulder dystocia guideline or a third and fourth degree um, a tear guideline um, or a VBAC guideline that you that we do all the time and, and, and we're already practising a lot of it in clinical practice and we're very used to, um, to, to the stuff that the guideline covers. Um, we're very lucky that way actually. Um, but yeah, but that's not true for all guidelines and that's what I'm trying to get at. Um, so... 
what you want to be doing is already having um, having to start off with with going through those guidelines and 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 summarizing those guidelines in a manner that will that will help you for the exam um, before um, you you even um, start revising for the exam properly um, and, and and getting that time included for your revision time um, now that could be a, a guideline a week that you do or two guidelines a week depending on how much time you've got um, a few guidelines on the weekend for example um, but but it's 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 a slow it's a steady process and because of the vast um, amount of material that you need to cover you kind of also need to be build some long-term memory with this knowledge because you can't you can't just expect your brain to be able to keep all the hundred things that you've read um in in, in your memory um you know a night before the exam or two weeks before the exam and and so forth um so some of these guidelines will will be part of your long-term memory um and and that's true for example for the VBAC guideline because we we do it in practice all the time um, you will, when you start going through that guideline, you will be able to relate to a lot of a lot of it, um, and 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 that's and that's really good. Um, however, the other guidelines you may not be able to relate so much to it, and and hence why um, you will need to start a lot earlier than you think, um, where you'll be putting in the effort to summarise those guidelines. And I'm really trying to spend time here to to explain why you know, how to organise your material and how to really make it quite effective for you. Um, because I I feel like I feel like people um you know underplay or underrate this 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 process. Um because it's a post grad exam, what we don't get is a, a revision resource where everything for us is summarized and it's out there and all you do is is go up on it and start reading or start learning we kind of need to start these baby steps by ourselves um and with the busy jobs we've got um a lot of us aren't able to um to to you know to to be able to do this um and 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 that's why and that's where a lot of us um do find ourselves in trouble uh, when when it comes to then then um, revising for this exam. Now, what I have done on my YouTube channel is, which is revise the basics, is I've already started to um, summarize um, and share with you my revision notes um, from the guidelines and the togs that I covered um, when I sat the exam, just so you can get a flavor of it. Feel free to use these notes. Feel free to use them as a way to start you off. So when you, so for example, um, the one, the guideline that comes to my mind is a shoulder dystocia one that I've just, um, I've put the summary for on my channel. And um, when you go through that guideline on, on my channel, you'll be able to see how much of the information that you actually need from the guideline to be able to sit the exam. Um, so, so, so that's kind of your starting process. And I will continue to do the guideline summary and the talk summary and, and I've shared some flashcards and things on my channel as well, which hopefully should benefit you. Um, because that's, that's the kind of revision material that I used. Um, and if you do spot any errors, please, by all means, inform me, tell me um, in the comments section, um, as, as, as I am a human and I can, and I can err as well. So um, some of the question books that I used um, for the exam, um, the first one that I really, really recommend is the the, the, the first one list the, the what this this um, slide shows, um, which is a single best answer one. And um, it's it's a really, really good book to start because it kind of gives you, um, you know, an idea of what sort of questions uh, may come up. And it also, um, the good thing about the, the book is that it, um, when it goes through the answers, it tells you where exactly um, from the vast amount of resources you've got that the question was from. So you could go back and look up that TOG or the Green Top Guideline or the NICE Guideline or whatever it is. Um, so if you did miss it from your revision. Um, the second one there is... Um, is is a good book. However, it did have some uh, 
some mistakes in the answers. Now, some of the mistakes were because the guidelines have changed um, since the books were published, and um, and and others I just found that you know that there were some errors. So so be careful when you're using that book. Um, I would say that you. Um, Start off with the first one because that's a reliable one. It's a good one, um, and then the the next the the second one. Just leave it for the last. Don't don't start your revision with it um, because initially, when you don't know a lot, you don't want to be learning the wrong thing, and you want to be learning the the right thing as per the guideline. Um, the third one there, the Amanda Jones one. Now that's again a very, very good book. So by all means, um, go over it repeated times so you can you can get the hang of the of the the kind of questions that um, that are likely to come up, and 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 also it kind of um, tells you the depth that you need to know when you're then reading a guideline. Um, so. I actually would say that when you're starting your revision, obviously you're planning some resource in the background, but start doing the questions quite early on. Just, just start doing them. I know you'd think, oh, actually, I don't know the guidelines. What's the point of doing the question? No, start doing the questions because it's only by doing your questions you will know exactly how much depth you need to know when you go over that guideline and also what part of that guideline is is important um so it, it'll, it'll and also when you do a question and you get it wrong you're more likely and you go over the answer you're more likely to remember that question and answer um as opposed to if you were just reading reading a guideline um so start doing the question books quite early on and that's what i did i actually started doing that in the first textbook quite early on in my revision and, and 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 the good thing about that book is also it's divided the there's different sections different modules um that covered in the exam um so so like urogynecology gynecology or gyne oncology uh, maternal medicine and so forth so you could start off with a topic that you think you are maybe slightly comfortable with so for example i don't know urogynecology, and you can see what kind of questions come up and and you can and, and then you can tailor your revision accordingly um questions also kind of um set the tone for you in a lot of ways so they kind of said so it tells you the depth tells you um tells you where exactly to look up your information from um and and and, and helps retain is in that's the very 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 important thing uh, because this exam is all about retaining that knowledge that you've learnt and you will not be able to retain if you just keep reading um, a, a guideline you will have to um, make your brain um, work in, in in you know and stimulate it in different ways um, to be able to retain that information so whether that means note taking whether that means questions from your textbooks from your online resources um, trying to repeat uh, and recall what you've said you've you've learnt by say saying it loud or uh, talking um, to a friend about it um, so those are the kind of um, things that will help you um, or stimulate your brain to to um, and, and make it more likely that you will be able to retain all that knowledge that you've learnt um, so so yes, yeah, so that's a little bit about questions. Just get started with the questions as soon as you think about doing the exam because that will really help you in the long run. Some of the question books I've got here, um, as you can see on the slide, um, I found these really useful as well. Um, I thought they had really good questions, very relevant to the exam. And um, so yes, yeah, so by all means, um, try and cover as many question books as you can. Be careful though, as I said, some of these guidelines have been updated um, since the publication of these books. So um, so yeah, so just, just, um, just be careful. Um, when you do get an answer wrong, um, don't automatically think that you've, you've you, you don't know the answer just just check the reference for it um and and check that you've got the you you've been reading the most updated guideline because that the answer on it might be slightly different to the guideline that was published earlier on um but yeah all these books were quite useful and um and 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 you know and what um 
What I'm trying to say is the more question books you do, the more you expose yourself to um, to, to the guidelines and to the talks and, as I said, to the way the examiner wants you to think in the exam. And that will really help you in the exam when you're trying to then answer um, the questions and the talks uh, because because there is a lot of material um, that you will need to read. But by doing the questions, you're kind of setting yourself a good base already um, and, and, and that, that would really, that really helps. So on this slide, um, the first book that I've got, the green one, um, it's actually, now this book has got lots of numbers in it and again, it's got lot, lots of reference from the actual guidelines and the TOGS. And I found this resource very, very useful. Um, so by all means, um, probably not um, do it as the first um, book that you were doing for the exam, because it does require you to have some knowledge from the actual guidelines. So so probably start off with the, the, the blue one that I was talking about earlier. And then and then slowly as you're reading and getting your knowledge pool up, you can then try and answer some of the questions from this book. Because when I answered, um, when I tried to answer questions from this book quite earlier on in my revision, I got very disheartened and I thought, oh gosh, I can never cover the material that I need to do uh, because I'll never be able to answer these questions um, because they were just were so specific specific um so so please don't do that please don't do what i did um and that's why I'm, I'm here sharing this with you um so that you can you can be informed and and you don't have to do the same mistakes um that i did um but yeah but it's a very good book so i do want you to do it um but probably once you've had a, a bit of your knowledge base um the second book here i did not really um use the book a lot did do some um parts of the book like for example, because it doesn't really divide the book into um, the different uh, modules, from what I remember. So it was it was just um, so so I, d I didn't I didn't really interact with that book a lot. Um, but the next one on there is also very useful, and I would totally recommend using that book as well. Um, and all these books are quite um, um, you know freely available. So if you if you are in the UK and you are a member of the of the BMA, then some of the so this is the library the bma library has got um these textbooks you don't have to really pay for all of them is what i'm trying to say um or um even your um, local hospital library so do go out and check out um for these books um because because i i didn't have any difficulty getting hold of them um it's quite easy to get hold of um and and really what you need is just to just to be able to go through them so you don't really have to pay for it unless that's what you wanted to do then that's completely totally up to you um, but but yeah, but do try and use your um, free library resources um, to see if they are available. Um, now some of them on the BMA um, library website are actually available even online um, as an ebook. Um, so you don't even need to wait for the book to arrive in the post. Um, obviously, with the COVID pandemic. Um, you know that the, the library hasn't been operating um, as normally as it would have, so um, so there might be huge delays. Um, but yeah, bear that in mind. But do do check with your libraries definitely. So um, sticking to the theme of questions, um, some of the other resor resources that um, I used um, and I found useful, um, I'm going to talk about. So the BMJ on examination, I actually didn't find um, this resource very useful for the MRCOG part two. So please don't don't waste your money. Um, the next three resources is what I would really recommend. So um, the um, Andragog, the Pass MRCOG and the Strat-OG. So those resources you have to have to get. Now, when I say strategy, I mean the strategy questions, which you need to pay for, um, and, and, and the other resources. Now, try and do these question banks a few times, because once you do, do it once, you don't really tend to recall a lot. But when you keep repeating yourself, which is what this, um, these banks normally allow you to, um, then, then that's, then that's quite handy. And then, then you'll be able to, um, again, what, going back to what I said earlier about stimulating your brain, so you're trying to use different senses to to be able to answer these questions and trying to recall them, hence increasing the likelihood that you will be able to uh, to to recall more information. Um, but yeah, totally recommend the last three um, resources. 
So um, togs, really, really have to read the togs. There's no, there's, there's absolutely no way that you can pass the exam without reading togs because um, although the questions in in the exam will be from a lot of, of it will be from the guidelines, but the togs really help to cement your knowledge and there will absolutely be questions from the togs as well. So you you have to read the last three three years worth of togs but not just that you've also got to cover the important togs um, like for example the headaches in pregnancy tog um, the urinary incontinence tog the 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 the, 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 the tog that covers a ureteric injury um, and so forth so you will be able to work these togs out as you go through those questions um, from the different books and resources I've mentioned. Um, but yeah, totally, totally need to read the togs, summarise the togs and, and, and learn the, 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 the facts and figures that are given to you from the togs. Um, and as I said, on my channel, um, I've, I've, I've started to summarise um, some of these togs for you. Um, so by all means... Um, you know, watch it, learn from it. And if there is any togs that you really want me to cover, then then please go ahead and tell me in the comment section and, and I can and I can go over it because it's a very it's a very good chance. I probably already have some summary revision notes on it um, so I could just share it with you. And I don't mind sharing any knowledge that would actually benefit someone because we do spend a lot of hard work and a lot of time effort into um into doing this exam and i absolutely want all of you to be successful now some of the guidelines obviously you know about the green top guidelines the nice guidelines have got lots of guidelines on um things that are quite relevant um as well like normal labor and and so forth which which we will which you you absolutely absolutely have to have to cover um on like guidelines on cesarean section and so forth heavy menstrual bleeding uh, so some of the guidelines that are coming to my mind um the bash guidelines for um the you know the sdi stuff and then fsrh for the contraception guidelines are all of these resources are absolutely important because they again as said um questions are you know based on these guidelines and 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 they and it's very very important to be able to cover them um the next thing um i've got here is um so apart from stuff that you will do from the guidelines there's also stuff that you will need to cover from uh, other topics like your statistics and your um, clinical governance and your um, the embrace report because these because um, there'll be there'll be again um, questions um, that can come from from these um, you know topics that um, aren't really very clearly covered in the in in the guideline um so so yes yeah, so absolutely do um you know keep some time aside uh, for this now again i have got a um i've got some flashcards actually for you uh, on 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 the clinical governance and statistics so by all means check that out on my channel um because that that will also give you um some some useful information um that you can take away and that should help you for the exam I do apologise for um, the long video, but I do think that um, it's needed because you do need to know all this information um, before you embark your journey for the part two exam. Um, so please benefit from this, from this knowledge that I've shared with you, um, because I wish someone had, um, had, inf had you know, informed me about this. Um, but yes, if you do want me to do another video where I talk about the talks that I did for my exam um, or the green top guidelines um, and, and exactly which guidelines are the nice and all and, and, and all that you need to cover, then then I'm quite happy doing that. And please, please leave that comment in, in the comment section. But please like um, uh, this video if you found anything about it useful. Um, also subscribe to my channel um, so you can benefit from more um from from videos like these um but but yeah happy revising